question about gas. Yep. So we have a variety of options, obviously. Um, you've got beer gas, we have carbon dioxide, we have nitrogen, um, beer gas being a combination yep. of the two. Um, when should I use which? So we typically stick with carbon dioxide. Occasionally we'll do nitro. Um, we don't typically do beer gas. While I, beer gas solves the long draw draft system problem because if you're pouring 75% nitrogen, 25% carbon dioxide or some combination of it through there and you're putting a ton of pressure on the keg to get it through the jockey box, you're not, you're not going to overcarbonate the keg because nitrogen is, it's so hard to, to get the solution to absorb it that it's a better gas to, to push with, but it does weird things with the beer and with beer gas, when you're combining them, you can't put as much of that gas into a, like a, if you're using like a five pound tank, you're only going to be able to get like a keg or two out of a, a five pound tank of beer gas because they can't compress it enough like pure CO2 or pure nitrogen. So with pure CO2, you can pour five or six full half barrels of beer out of a keg. You can't do that with beer gas. So your costs go way up and because CO2 is so cheap, that's typically what people use. So uh, nitrogen takes, you know, another type of regulator. It takes, I don't know. It just kind of complicates things when you're adding a whole nother gas into it, unless you need it for pouring Guinness or something. Um, I typically, we typically stay away from nitrogen, but um, yeah, that's. I think if you're pouring still drinks though, I would push nitrogen just so you don't run the risk yeah. of carbonating like a, margarita or whatever unless that's what you want i mean i've i carbonate carbonate margaritas intentionally and they're yeah. delicious yeah those are fun but you don't yeah, want to do so, it on accident right i guess yeah. is the point yeah i think that um one nitrogen is cheaper than co2 in most places at least uh, in my experience um and so it is beneficial for still drinks it's also beneficial for wine um yeah because unless it's Prosecco, right. Yeah, um, right. Or something with bubbles because it doesn't oxygenate it as it's poured. So honestly, in a mobile capacity, um, you're probably not going to carbonate anything too quickly while on site, unless your PSI is like way too high. Um, and, but I mean, and also it would have to be cold, right. Yes. And yep. if you're batching it on site, which most mobile bars uh, do, um, because they don't have access to the alcohol ahead of time anyways, um, then nitrogen is a nice option but to your point it is a whole nother setup it's a different regulator um you have to uh, change out your fittings per perhaps um if you have if you don't have a, like a full-on uh setup for multiple um couplers and that sort of thing um so that's i think the benefit of nitrogen is it's not going to oxy oxygenate what's inside um and it's not going to carbonate what's inside yep but as i also use co2 for the vast majority of everything that I did. It yeah, just so it's easier. I think that's a pretty good point. So if you're, if you're dealing with carbonation, go with CO2. If, you're, if you don't want carbonation, I would push with nitrogen because they're both inert gases. So, and they're both going to give you the pressure that you need to get through the through a system, especially if you're pushing it through a jumper or a jockey box, then you just, you just need that for the pressure. So. Yeah. Speaking of that, um, there is an entire line of... Um, I would not call them jockey boxes, but I don't know if you've ever heard of like the Linder machines. Hmm. Um, a lot of them push with air. They use an air compressor. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, coming from the beer world, that's a, a terrible idea. Yeah. Oxygen, when you're making beer, the process of brewing the beer, oxygen's your best friend. But after that beer becomes beer, it's your worst enemy. Mm -hmm. Like those Bronco pumps. I keep referencing Frat Boy, but that is like... When you go, it drives me nuts. I mean, obviously, I'm biased, but when you you know when you go to a nice wedding or even worse, a beer festival, and somebody that put all this hard work and money into this awesome IPA, you see them pump and it's just oxygen will immediately start to ruin any beverage for mm -hmm. that matter. I mean, red wine, right? It's good for a little bit for a day, right? You want that, but then after that, it just starts turning into vinegar and. I don't know. I don't usually let my wine get that old, but you know, it will happen. 
I like that. Don't let it get that old. Um, uh, Yakira asks for Prosecco, you suggest CO2 or nitrogen. I suggest CO2 for, for Prosecco because it's carbonated already. Yeah. And so it'll at least maintain that carbonation um, while it's being pushed. And that does pour well through a jockey box. We've experienced that. Or a jumping oh, box. Oh, yeah. 